You guys ever wonder why some log jams are better than others? Do you guys ever have problems pulling up to 10, 15, 20, 25 log jams and having a freaking total blank day? You ever look at Google Maps and just think, yeah, that place looks good, but I have no idea why. I don't know if it is any good. Well, in this video today, we're gonna talk about how to find these places using Google Maps, but also with a little bit of knowledge about river geomorphology and how that affects catfish. What is river geomorphology? That's really just like a fancy way of saying how different, how the river is basically affected by current, right? And how different types of substrates can be manipulated by current. And what does that mean for you? What does that mean for the structure that you fish? The four main types are rock, clay, sand, and mud, or dirt, whatever. Most of your rivers, especially throughout the Midwest, are a healthy mix of all four of these. Mine certainly is. It is predominantly sand, but there is a lot of mud, there's a lot of rock, a little bit of clay. In this video, I'm gonna be taking still shots, but I'm also gonna be doing some videos uh, where we go on Google Maps and we start looking at different places. And I, a lot of these places I've already been to, but some of them I haven't. And I'm gonna to explain to you how to look at these maps and, and without ever even going there, have a good understanding of what the depth of the water is and how to tell where deep holes and things like that. We are post-spawn right now, so a lot of fish are deep. They hang out deep all day and they're in the deepest structure they can find. This is gonna wildly determine your fishing trips, especially your nighttime fishing trips, because those fish are gonna come out of that deep water, out of that deep structure, and they're gonna head for where they think the bait is. And it's up to you to find these places and intercept them before they get there. I hope you enjoy this video. So first things first, this is the second taping of this video because I'm a nincompoop and accidentally deleted the first one. That's okay, because we can remake it. I will say it was very demoralizing. So let's talk about log jams real quick for just a second. These dogs have a lot to say about it, unfortunately. Anyways, why are some log jams good and some not good? A log jam really needs two things to be really effective. Uh, one is depth, the other is current. Um, and it needs it in either the whole log jam or at least part of the log jam, hopefully the outside, but Preferably, I would like current over about three quarters of the log jam. What makes that so important? There's like, there's this idea of this understanding that flatheads don't like current. Nothing could be farther from the truth. Now it's my dog. They're very excited about log jams in flatheads. Flatheads absolutely love current. They rely upon current. This all harkens back to sort of a video that I made uh, called uh, Flathead Catfish, How to Recognize the Right Banks and Where to Put Your Baits. I realize now that I didn't go in depth enough in that video, and that's why I'm making this video. It's because a lot of people are log jam fishing, a lot of people are sitting up all nights uh, trying to fish for these things, and they're not having a lot of luck. A lot of them are. They've, I've gotten a huge outreach just poured into me about all the people that said that this, this helped them tremendously, and they actually caught their first flathead. Uh, because of it, which is why I freaking do this. That was That's probably the coolest feeling in the world. But anyways, flatheads and current, um, they, it's probably their favorite thing. You have to, one thing you have to keep in mind is flatheads are a riverine creature. They, they, they live in the rivers. Uh, before human beings come along and started building reservoirs, you have to remember there were almost no lakes. There were, there were almost none. Okay, there was uh, lakes and things like that were very rare. So it's not, the catfish is, is the, this catfish is completely at home in rivers. In a lot of tag studies uh, where they, they tag these catfish and they track them over the course of a year, two years, um, flatheads will travel tens of miles upriver every spring. They, they do this primarily at nighttime. In the daytime, they dip in and they, they hang out in structure or, or deep holes or in rock piles, uh, whatever they can get into, whatever they can find uh, during the day. And then at nighttime, they resume their, their trek up river. And I can explain to you really quickly later in the video about which parts of the river they utilize to do that. And that's why this video is so important to catching those big fish when they're on the move up river. So they have no problems with current. 
current also does something else. It actually changes the morphology of the river, more specifically, immediately around a rock pile. Have you ever heard the expression, old wood is better than new wood? Let's just talk about new wood for just a second. <clears throat> what happens when a tree falls in the water? Tree falls in the water, what, what is the immediate thing that occurs right after that? You have an influx of food for smaller fish, okay? You've got bugs, you've got mites, you've got all kinds of things that live uh, in the bark and on the leaves and, and in and around that, that, that tree that a ton of little bait fish come in and, and move in on. You have debris that's coming down river that is collecting that. So again, more bugs, foam, and all kinds of things like that that a, that a lot of little fish feed on. You've also created a current break behind it where those little fish can hang out. That's what the, those are the immediate effects of a new tree falling into the river. Oftentimes what these become are excellent places for things like channel cats and, and the occasional nighttime flathead that might cruise up and just see what's going on because there's a bunch of bait there. But these are not really good places to go log jam hop fishing, right? Like this isn't a place where a flathead's gonna hold up all day long normally. And there's a reason for that. What happens with old wood? I'm talking wood that's been there 10, 15, 20 years, or even longer. Uh, I know of log jams that have been there since I was a boy, and that's over 30 years ago. So when water, when current hits these old logs, what does it begin to do, right? It hits the log and starts to dig out underneath it. When it sits there long enough, it digs out a small trench around it. Okay, this is why current is so important. What ends up happening is you create a trench that goes out and around whichever direction the current is able to go around this log. And flatheads specifically, but channel cats will do it too, but flatheads will sit down in these little trenches that are dug out by the current. Okay, what that does is if you look at a, a flathead, his eyes are on the top of his head, which means if he, as he sits in this, this trench, he can see everything above him and everything in front of him, but nothing can see him, right? Because he's concealed in that trench, but he can see everything. It's almost as if these fish were made for this, like they, and, and they quite possibly might be. But this is why, this is one of the reasons why old wood is, is better than new wood. Oftentimes flatheads will give, will, will lay eggs in these log jams as well. And some flatheads never leave their log jams. So they'll, they'll hang out there until they get eaten or until a bigger one comes and pushes them off or somebody catches it and takes it out. That's, I mean, there's literally log jams like that. And there's fish like that uh, because they have no reason to. Uh, by, by sitting there in, those, in, in that environment, they can get food all day. This is why we log jam hop. This is why you almost always fish on the, on that uh, on the front of a log jam is because that's where fish are laying and it's, it's not just the case with 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 logs it's the same with rock and and other debris whatever it is if you're looking for rocks a lot of people fish for them in rocks and you, and you certainly should be doing that but when you're fishing for flathead specifically in the daytime in rock uh, you should be looking for big rock like really big rock like slab rocks that are the size of this table, right? Like big rock. Okay, so we've talked about why log jams are better than other log jams. You need two things. You need current and you need some depth, right? Like those two things are what you should be looking at. And remember, depth is relevant. If, if the rest of the river is two to three feet and, and right in front of this, this, this log jam is a hole that's four, five, six feet deep, that's your hole. Okay, that's what you're looking for. Those are the types of areas that you're looking for. Now let's move on to how do you even find these places? And this is true if you're in a boat. It's true if you're on the bank. I don't care. This is gonna shave a ton of time off of your day. So here we have a really interesting bank. If you notice right here, there's a lot of rock put along the bank. This was to protect this guy's field and this road. These farmers get permits so they can protect their stuff. And they dump a lot of rock right through here. Uh, but really interesting right here is this little wing night that they put in. So it's basically a rock pile to divert current away from something. That's what a wing dam does. And it diverts current out here, but what it actually ends up doing is creating a deposit right along here. And the real hole that gets created is right here. It's on the backside. They're always on the backside. Normally these will be a lot closer behind it, 
Uh, but here in this particular case, I guess because all of this rock that was put in here, uh, the hole didn't actually occur until back here. And that's about 15, 20 feet deep. Um, anytime you see anything with a really hard substrate, on the back side of it, somewhere where it meets a softer substrate, like uh, it could be mud or usually sand in this case, it's going to be on the back side of it. There's going to be a deep hole somewhere. So that's something to keep in mind. Right here is another one. Boom. There's another deep hole right here. Okay. And you've got a couple more right up here. You've got a couple more deep holes. Boom. There's another one. One of the things that I talked about earlier was uh, the way flatheads travel upriver. Um, let's look at uh, some banks here that, uh, that they would use to travel along. So... One of the things you, that I always look for are these little brake lines right here. So this is one of the ways that flatheads travel along upriver, but also when they hunt at night, they're hunting along these things, right? And they'll also hunt through this, but they're also hunting in here as well. Uh, these are the kind of places you want to put your baits. Let's see if I can find another really good one. It's really well defined. Here's one. Here's a good one. Boom. That's like a straight drop off. Right there, here's another one. And here is the long one that runs along the channel. This is a really good one. So you would camp out on this soundbar and you'd throw your baits out right here. This is the kind of place you're looking for. Okay. Let's try and find one more. There's a good one there, but I find one that's a little bit more better to find. Okay, here we go. So right here, this is an excellent place right here and all along here right here boom these are the kind of places this is how flatheads travel up river by the way uh, but this is also how they hunt at night here's another good one that you can see right through here they utilize this because it's also a current break so not only can they easily find food along it it acts as a current break for them and they can travel up river very easily and they do this almost exclusively uh, at night. Uh, so let's take a look at some log jams. Where you at? Where you at? Oh, look at that. That's really good there. I like that. Oh, that's a really another well defined one. Boom. Flatheads hunt along these. Definitely want to hit stuff like that. Here's another really good one right here. These are really good. Here's one. Boom, 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 boom. So, right here is a really good example of uh, a, a pretty decent log jam you got quite a bit and it's on an outside bend so you got plenty of current and it's deep so this is a place where a fish is going to hold up during the day and this would be an excellent sandbar if it was above land or above water to fish at night and you'd fish all along this these fish are going to come out of here they're going to cross over and they're going to hunt all this you're going to hunt all through here this would be a really good spot uh, but let's see if we can find some more. I'm passing a lot of them. Um, see, like, for example, this one here. Uh, there could be, I don't really know. This is probably not a good log jam. A lot of logs like this that are holding channel cats and other kinds of bait. There could be a flathead in there, but I doubt it. That if you look right through here, there's quite a bit of structure. There's actually a pretty decent log jam right here most of the year, but it's, it's out of the water in this picture. So this is probably the best one that I've found out of all of them. And the reason why is because <clears throat> you've got a sandbar here, but it's, it's not your typical sandbar. It's, it's kind of a harder substrate. There's quite a bit of rock mixed in with it. And so what's happened here is water rushes over the top of this and gouges out a hole right here, right underneath these logs. So you've got deep water and timber in the same spot. This is like one of your ideal locations. This is where you would go to try and catch a big fish during the day. Uh, but you would also fish this whole thing at night. Um, there's also something else right here. You can't really see it that well, but this is a uh, rock bar that comes out. It sort of acts like a wing dike. 
and it's created a a deep hole over here on its backside and out, there's a lot of timber in there as well so this is like just some of the other things you would look for uh, but this right here there's a lot going on right here but this is exactly what I would look for is this little spot right here uh, but I also would ignore this as well a lot of big fish are gonna hunt along uh, this outside point yeah that, that I mean this is the primo spot that I've seen over probably 10 miles of river here this is the best spot guys I really hope you enjoyed that video I had a lot of fun making it if you guys have any questions or you have any comments please feel free to leave them down below. I answer and go through every single one of them and I always answer them as soon as I see them. I hope you guys are out there slaying it. I really do. I hope you're having a good time. Um, the fishing content's really been behind for me. Uh, I haven't been on the water very much. Uh, like last night, I think for like the last three or four weekends in a row that I've tried to go flathead fishing, uh, we've had just torrential downpours. And uh, it's really hard for me, almost impossible to film in these environments. Uh, I just can't. I take too many risks uh, ruining my gear. So my, my camera equipment's very expensive. So uh, I really just haven't been able to get on the water. Uh, I think I've only really put in a really good one night this year of flathead fishing, if that tells you anything. And it takes a lot more than that to be successful at flathead fishing. I've just been too busy with work and kids and everything. So I apologize for that, but I don't apologize for that, to be honest with you. Uh, I really like making the informational stuff, and uh, I'm actually working on getting a boat together, a uh, river boat. I'm looking at a 25 horse Mercury jet drive motor, uh, which is absolutely imperative for fishing my river. I had a boat from the time I was 16 to the time I was 22, and it was probably the biggest mistake of my life was selling that boat. I lived on the river when I had it, and I got rid of it because of life. I uh, went into the Marine Corps, sold that damn thing, and I shouldn't have sold it. So, But that's what I'm doing right now. I'm working on a lot of stuff, getting everything together so I can give you guys some really cool content. And plus, I want to start taking people fishing. Like, I really, I really want to do that. With all that being said, I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next one. There it is. Real, real. <laughs> Look at that. A two pound flathead eat a one pound live <laughs> channel cat. Unbelievable. Now that, that I'm impressed with. My baby bass. Attack of the baby flatheads. Yeah. I'm alright. I'm gonna keep coming. <laughs>